Greetings everyone, my name is Etterville, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Mega Man Unlimited. In the last part, I completed the first two stages of Wily's Occupied Fortress. Now time to move on to the third one. Whereas the first two stage gimmicks were the jet segments and the water, here this time it's based off of gravity segments. But we'll be getting to that soon enough. I have no need to take that extra life, so I'll avoid using it. I really want to conserve my Nitro Blast and tank arsenal life weapon energy. Be careful while trying to jump over here, avoid these cross nailers. The main annoyance of, one of the main annoyances of this stage are all these yo-yo chasers. The fact is that sometimes they come up in places which are kind of hard to hit. I know you can try taking them out with a jet missile, but you need to be in a specific position in order to do so. Your best bet is using the Yoku attack. Here's the beginning of the gravity segment of this stage. It's basically a, mu a much tougher and more creative version of the ones found in tri Nitro Man stage. Over here is a set of spike drops. You can skip going past the left by just using the Comet Dash. Be really careful and, and make sure to, uh, to dodge to left or right when necessary. I suggest having a shock guard. Or several. Here's a W tank. Of course, I have four, so might as well refill all my weapon energy. This is basically just a tutorial that we'll see later on with the shield attackers and other enemies. Here it's not too bad, but later on we'll have to go over bottomless pits and whatnot. I do like the crea increased creativity here. Here it's uh, something more like what I wanted Gravity Man stage in Mega Man 5 to be. Gravity Man was pretty nice, but I wish they went further with the stage gimmicks. For the Gravity stage gimmick. Here it's done pretty well, though with a lot of spikes. And as usual, I strongly suggest having several shock guards and beat calls so you don't fall to your death. But of course, I'm not. I'm not sure if the beat calls work when you're upside down, so there's that. But really though, the main, the main enemies of the stage aren't too much of a threat other than the yo-yo chasers, and probably those cannons. Here I decided to skip this room entirely by using the rush coil, so that's nice. But main the hazard at this stage are the cross nailers, the cha chasers, the erupts coming later on, and probably the tellies. And flashers, of course. The main hazard of this stage is the gravity gimmicks. And all the spikes, so you don't accidentally skewer yourself. Or fall into a pit. It takes a bit of time getting used to, but if you got the secret or got the Yoki letter in Trinatra Man's secondary path, you should be well equipped to go through here. Just take it slow and you should be fine. I do like how it's over here, it's, you're, you're again forced to use the glue shot so to create the blocks. It kind of reminds me of some of those extra in the segments in Mega Man Rock Force where, uh, where you have extra blocks where you can use the Crypt Cloak. Uh, so you can stand on those blocks. Pretty interesting, though unlike there, it, it's not mandatory. It's mandatory here. Speaking of comparisons between Rock Force and Mega Man Unlimited, one of which I'd like to touch upon is the weapon choice. Personally, I think that Mega Man Unlimited has a pretty, a pretty n a nice set of weapons you can pick from. Though, in comparison to Mega Man and um, Mega Man Rock Force, I would find Mega Man Rock Force Arsenal would be better. Although, Mega Man Rock Force's Arsenal is more OP, overpowered in a sense. Here in Mega Man Unlimited, the weapons are much more balanced in terms of utility and variety. In terms that they do more, more different things. Sort of. Although there's... Although there, uh, there are certain similarities. Like, we have utility items like the Glue Shot, and Crypt Cloak uh, from Order of Games, 
You have ex uh, one explosive based, oh, two explosive based weaponry, a lock on, etc. etc. Though I feel like the weapons are. they're nice and all, but they're not very easy to cross over with each other's feels. When, when I was in Mega Man Rock Force, I felt that a lot of the weapons could cross over in their own fields and be awesome. Really though, in Mega Man Rock Force, there were only like, two or three weapons which I which I don't really favor. All the other ones were pretty good. In this game, well, I would say that half the at least half the weapons are kind of situational. Though unlike Rock Force, at least half the weapons are kind of based off explosions and whatnot. So there's that. Over here, you could either use the glue shot to get up, or use the rush curl again. Or, if you were careful enough, you could have just gone down the platforms earlier. But yeah, we essentially have a, a metal blade analog in this game, a lock-on missile, a shield weapon, a utility block, a, the glue shot. Then we have, of course, a, a simple explosive-based weapon, which, of course, is a little bit differentiated by the fact that you have three of them firing guns, aka the tank arsenal. Then, of course, we have the comet dash, which is basically this uh, movement. It, it's basically kind of like the wild sprint in Mega Man Revolution. It's a nice way to speed up your movement and utility, but I haven't used the rush, uti rush utilities. And last but not least, we have things like the Nitro Blast, which is like a straight explosive. And... Uh, and the Yuka Attack as well. Over here is a Zippering Spike and Block section. It's easier than Yoku Man to this stage, but still a bit annoying. Here's where the stage gets pretty t uh, the toughest part. Here, as the gravity is reversed, the top ones are bottomless pits, and the, bo and the bottom is like the ceiling. Unfortunately, I don't think Beach can rescue you if you fall from the top, though I haven't really tested it yet. And, and last but not least, though I forgot to mention, the Rainbow Beam is the last weapon, which is somewhat like an explosive base, but it's more of a it's more of a area of effect attack, as unlike explosions, which end up uh, taping yourself out after a short while, it lasts for a lot longer. Though its damage is kind of meh, it's best for men who said more fast and have low health. It's kind of funny here that the bullet trap can it can get glue those missiles toward to it. But really though, though this game's repertoire is pretty nice, though I still would prefer having rock forces. But that's not really a black mark against this game. I would say this would be a fine adjustment in the normal Mega Man game, if there was a sequel to Mega Man 9 or 10. At 10 that is. And to be fair, this game originally was titled Mega Man 10, until Capcom actually announced Mega Man 10. So, there's that. It's definitely... It's definitely true to the source material. And to be fair, I find it to be a better substitute for Street Fighter Cross Mega Man for the anniversary title. The 25th Mega Man anniversary title. As this was actually released in the 2011 as well. Mega Man, uh, Street Fighter Cross Mega Man was eh, kind of average, whereas this one is a, I would say is a much better suitor to it, as it builds upon a lot of the, of the elements in previous classic Mega Man games. In fact, the charge shot was actually added in the latest patch. And if almost before I forget to mention, I love this music at this stage. It's a nice dramatic and has a tone that we're getting finality and whatnot. Anyways, here's the boss, and here's Bass and Proto Man. Apparently, Proto Man isn't doing so well. Uh, 
And, as applied here, Protoman has been infected by the virus. Like the previous Protoman fights, the thing you have to do here is try getting behind him as quickly as possible. Protoman basically it does a series of jumps, slides, and buster shots from the left or right side of the screen, by which way he's jumping. Your main bet is to get behind him so you can do multiple shots at him at once. After, after he gets to one side of the screen, he'll charge up his buster and fire a larger shot. Just jump over it, and it shouldn't be too bad. Thing is though, you, should, you can't really fire from as far because of the shield. His main weakness is the, the Comet Dash, I believe. Though, it's not too, too much of a problem to fight him normally. As long as you can get behind him and predict when he slides or jumps, it, it's not too bad. Though, I'm, uh, it's easier than ever when I make it look here. Poor Proto Man. He's sorry for being infected by that new virus. But yeah, the first time I was playing this, it was kind of like a surprise, as I kind of expected to fight Bass. Or Bass. My apologies. I expected to fight Bass in this stage. Oh well, that's a nice change of pace. After making our way all the way up for the past three Y stages, it's time to go all the way down. Oh yes, and you know what's coming up. Over here, the designers were kind enough to actually leave a WE tank and a large weapon energy. I kind of made a, a small gaff over here as I forgot to use a W tank before collecting this W tank. I really wish that more games adopted the model of that if you collect an excess W E tank, it automatically uses one of them. Or just doesn't collect it at all. Oh well, not too much of a pain. Here at the bottom we have three options for where you want to go. Do not take the left option. I think you can make it past the spikes there, but from the last three t tries that I attempted it, I kept dying on the spikes. And at this point, I strongly suggest you have at least a one uh, a beat call or spike guard and shock guard. Anyways, after all this, there's a reference to Mega Man X in terms of how we're falling. It's time for the capsule room. Though it's m kind of different from the typical Mega Man games. It's in the sense that instead of it taking the capsule teleporter to the boss fight, it instead leads to a room based off of a certain stage which the World Master resided in. In this case, it's Yoku Man's. So it's, it's kind of nice. It's kind of like a review of what stage houses you faced in that particular stage. Though I find it to be kind of a harder mix than before. Especially Tank Man's and others, but we'll get into that. Also, you may be wondering that why I'm going to Yoku Man's uh, stage right now, as he's one of the extra world masters. When I was first playing this, I was thinking, oh, I'm going after Yoku Man now because I went after him once before. Nope. Even if you haven't faced Yoku Man or defeated him before, regardless of that, you'll be refighting him in the world master refights, even if you never fought him before. Which kind of makes it a little bit more uh, tricky as you don't have his weakness. Though his weakness is kind of humorous. The Yoku Man kind of suffers from the same symptom that Metal Man suffered from. Yep, Me Yoku Man's weakness is the Yoku Attack, the same weapon we got from him. With just two attacks from the Yoku Attack, he's dead. So, yeah, Metal Man Syndrome. And by these Whippicurons, or uh, Leprechauns, it's time for Rainbow Man section. Though I find it to be much easier than Rainbow Man stage itself, just be quick. This was very close shave over there. I, I would have preferred to actually just use Glue Shot as shot. Rainbow Man's weakness is the Glue Shot. And an interesting note is that if you fire the Glue Shot into one of those clouds, it'll immediately stop his attack. So that's pretty nice. And he's down. 
Of course, the Rainbow Man isn't too difficult, even without his weakness. There is Yo-Yo Man's, signified by all these ball cannons, cannonballs. My apologies, not to uh, keep getting it mixed up. Not Yo-Yo Man, it's Comic Woman. Though I find it to be interestingly different. Mainly by the fact that and there's no low gravity here. It's back to normal gravity. Also, I do like the fact that we actually have a Yoku attack which can collect all these power-ups from a long distance. It's kind of like having the Mega Arm from Mega Man V for the uh, Game Boy. Or the Mega Arm in, in the Mega Man Revolution. Always nice. I didn't want to take any chances here, so I decided to use the rush jet. Anyways, time to fight Common Woman again. Her weakness is the tank arsenal, as apparently tank uh, tanks can blow up uh, comets with their arsenal. Basically, use the shotgun approach to destroy them or to, to damage her. And because of the low gravity, it makes dodging those or orbs much harder. Here's Nail Man's segment again. I find it to be much harder than the original stage, as most of the time when platforming, we weren't platforming over a bottomless pit. It's mostly on spikes, but it was relatively tame. So personally, my best suggestion here is to actually use the Nail Shield against these cr uh, Nail Platforms. I wanted to take out the Met Jack just in case I got hit by one of those spikes or debris. I didn't want to take any chances here as I died several times while attempting the stage. Quite annoying. Anyways, Nail Man's weakness is the Nitro Blast, as the blast can break through his shield. Yeah, rather pathetic. Of course, like many other Mega Man games, using the weaknesses against World of Masters really trivializes them. But that's to be fair, it makes the game it's supposed to make the game a bit easier if you follow the correct path. Here's Jetman's summary stage. First is basically summarizing all the shield hackers and uh, erupts, as well as the man powered platforms. Not too bad as long as you're careful. And the top is a pretty funny occurrence. Out coming from the wall is a Mr. Shinri. I just wanted to recharge my energy. Pretty funny here. If you go up, boom! Apparently well, one races in pretty fast, so kind of uh, humorous. Here's Jetman again. His weakness is the Comet Dash. It was mentioned in the uh, Moment Master Bios that Comet Woman and Jetman love to race. So, in that sense, it's, it makes sense, as comets can easily destroy the fighter jets. Also, as another funny note, before uh, in version 1.0, before several bug fixes were made, you could actually one-hit kill Jetman, as well as another boss, because of the odd-shaped Roman Master door. Because here, you're entering the boss fight from below, you can actually one-hit kill him while his life bar goes up. So yeah, another human's occurrence. It was exploited quite a bit for speedrunners. It can be done. It could have been done the same with a certain other robot master. Here's Yo-Yo Man segment again. But yeah, I in general though, I really enjoy what they did, uh, what Mega Felix and the other developers did in terms of recreating the stages for the capsule ones. It's a nice change of pace from the usual bo uh, instant boss fights. Yo-Yo Man's weakness is a jet missile. It's still very difficult to take care of him. It can destroy the yo-yos as well. And if you lock on when he's flying up like this, you can also hit him. Which makes it easier too. But still, he's difficult. But in general, I like how the developers a a did this in instead of the usual. Mega Man Rock Force did something similar as well. Though instead of creating all new segments with the 
pre-established level hazards and enemies. They instead decided to just take the actual level segments themselves and join them together. Here, it's just remaking those level segments. But in Rock Force, they took it wholesale and just merged them together. Well, there were some differences, but the general segments were still the same. General and structure, not, not aesthetics. In both of these, the aesthetics are the same, or similar to the original stages. But, over here, the stage design, the, the level layout is different from before. Whereas in Rock Force, it was relatively the same. Uh, it's not really a complaint in Rock Force, it's just a nice, interesting difference. And besides, it's a, it's a nice, as I said multiple times already, it's a nice change of pace from the usual tel instant teleport here. Um, Here's try now for my segment. I think I made a goof over here, so what I decided to do was just use the Lush Jet. And also as another nice uh, tip for this game, a compliment, there are multiple ways of getting through these hazards, through use of certain special weapons, or by using the Rush Utilities. Here's Trinatraman. His weakness is the Rainbow Beam. Though, I kind of harm the sloppily here. If you can hit him in the correct spot, you can hit him about 3 to 4 times in one go. And of course, I finished him off by destroying his top. On to the last two. Here's Tank Man segment. Uh, this is the I found this to be the most difficult, mainly because the conveyor belts. I found that they weren't as much. They were much easier in the original state. Here, especially this segment, E. I've essentially fell in the same pit three or four times, uh, about three times. The main thing, uh, the main strategy here is that you must do small jumps in order to get across here. But of course, there was not enough experience in the main stage to train us for that. I feel. Over here it's kind of an abuse of the bottomless pits, which is why I strongly suggest that you actually buy a lot of beat calls for the stage. Well, this is the main reason why I wanted to get all these beat calls. This segment of this particular stage, as well as the second boss fight of Y Stage 2. Normally you're supposed to go take the left pad up, or you could just use the glue block to jump over it. Tank's man's weakness is the nail shield. Fitting, really, as the nails are armor piercing. Unfortunately, I ran out of weapon energy for it, so I decided to refill everything. But, sorry, the nail shield is so, is so useful for a lot of things. On to the last one. Here's glue man's. Over here is another uh, glue or bullet trap. And here's our friend the potty presser from before. And here we're taking her off the same way as before, but this time there's a conveyor belt to make it even more challenging. But like before, he goes down from eight or nine of those yo yoku, I mean yo-yo blades. And here's Glue Man. His weakness is a yo-yo cutter. Another advantage which didn't show here is because they act like a metal blade, they can actually climb up the walls while he's jumping up, which makes this fight even easier. Though I never really fired against the wall, so. But with that, he's down. In the next part, I'll be going after the final stages. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Doodles!